Reef Bum is sponsored by Bulk Reef Supply and Ecotech Marine. And I was asking uh, a number of my friends, have you had more instances of problems in the past year or two with STN, RTN, dinos, something? And virtually everyone has had something. So two weeks ago, Tulio came over from yeah. Reef Bright and brought his photospectrometer. And we started looking at the lights and everything else on my tank. And one of the interesting things he showed me, and I know this is going to start a big hornet's nest of uh, questions and debate, because I, I don't know the answer, but I'm, I'm curious about it. And at the same time, I have been posting pictures of tanks from 20 years ago that were run yeah. under metal halides. So getting back to Tulio, when he ran the photospectrometer, under all the different LEDs I have, none of them produce any UV huh. light. They say there's UV light, but there's virtually no UV light on the photospectrometer. So one of the things we learned from COVID is that viruses and other organisms don't like ultraviolet light. So I'm wondering if this could possibly be some of the problems that we're now having is we don't have any UV light hitting our tanks to kill off some of these pathogens. But what Tulio and I came up with is, okay, don't take off the LEDs but you might add your old metal halo. Biggest thing that I see as a problem with all LEDs is the claim of UV. Yeah, we talked about that with the uh, Paletta. There is no UV. That's what he said. He said uh, Tulio came over, broke out the uh, spectrometer, and there was no UV that was measured. Okay, so where I'm getting at with this is when I put my new farm system in, and I, you, Keith, you saw it, but I don't think there was a whole lot in it back in April. I think we were just starting to put more and more corals into it. Um, I have the uh, Coral Cares, and I have the XHOs over that. And it was the only system in my entire facility that was strictly LEDs. And it didn't even dawn on me until all these little itty-bitty subtle problems started happening when I was removing, like, what the first thing that really irritated me badly was the parameters from ICP testing that I get every single week from the farm system I was taking calls from and fragging them down and making sure that there was no uh, exposed skeleton from the other farm system. The only thing that would possibly be put in would be exposed tissue into the new farm system was how we were adding corals to it. We were taking big colonies, breaking them down and making sure that there was nothing that could harbor um, algaes or whatnot. It's not a foolproof plan, but it was um, without space. I don't have time to QT everything like I want to, but it's been, it worked really well and it has worked still to this day really well without ha introducing a lot of crazy weird stuff that have, might come from another system. Um, I, I took my prize torch collection that was growing under metal halides and T5s for years. And I had some colonies that I grew from a single polyp out to, you know, seven or eight polyps. I broke them all down from the main farm in the back, cleaned them, toothbrushed them. We even got the Dremel tool out and made sure that all the algae was, I mean, we, we, I was so anal about it, moved it all over into the farm and they were looking amazing under the, under the coral cares and under the, under the reef brights. Absolutely amazing. As my as I kept moving more and more over to it, um, it was about three months into it. Um, for no reason, uh, one one polyp that I had made a separate tile for to grow into a colony, one polyp would start, you know, closing up, and I'm going, "What the heck is going on? You know, why is this happening? These corals were thriving in the farm in the back. Now they're starting to shrink up a little bit here. What what, what is this? I'm pulling my hair out. Like I, I'm having gene. Make sure calibrate your machine when, before you do this test and calibrate it before you do this test. I want to see what you get. I'm like, I'll pay you whatever I got to do. I, I need to know what's going on in my system. What is in my water that's causing these corals to not do well in here versus the farm at the back. And we couldn't find anything that was a toxin, anything that was just a, a, a level that was so far different. You know, we just couldn't find anything. 
So then I narrowed it down to, okay, maybe it's the flow because I only had, you know, the main return pumps and there was only uh, the closed loop underneath for, for flow. And you feel these, they were moving pretty good. So I put um, more gyres in to get even more flow. And then I started losing even more. And I'm going, okay, this is really, really irritating me. These coils are precious. They've been farmed for years and now they're just dying one by one. Called Tulio. Tulio's like, I know what your problem is. No UV. I'm, I'll be down. I'll explain when I get there. Uh, he came down two days later with his computer and his spectrograph and his UVA, UVB, UVC monitors. With with um, when Tulio came down, he measured the UV of all of every single light that was in my in my tank on all of my systems. All the metal halides had UV. All the T5s had very minute amounts, as only like thirty micromoles. Um, and then um, I went to a specific UV bar that I had that has five. UV, so-called UV LEDs in them, and we put his meter right up on it, and there was zero UV. So we went around to the other LEDs, and the Illumagics um, had, I think it was three micromoles. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> Doesn't sound a lot. Like, you know, it's pretty... Down two inches below it, and it was zero. But you put my... when On the halide, we put the sensor under the water, and we had, uh, it was 50 to 60 micromoles of UV in pretty much... Uh, the lowest points inside the aquarium. And even with the T5 only areas, there was, you know, 15, 20 micromoles of UV. And that was UVB, UVC. There was no UVA on any of them. Um, just nothing produces it, you know, enough. Um, well, actually, the metal halides up close had some UVA. So Tulio is like, I know your problem. Look at the algae in your tank in this in this system and look at the algae growing in your other systems. And I noticed this too. I had this weird, dark, almost black velvety type algae growing in the tank and the system that was strictly leds and now granted this tank was set up from scratch cycled and all leds never had a metal halide or t5 over it it was a brand new system so this black algae was really weird to me and even when i took it out and looked at it under a microscope i it was just looked like most of the other algaes that were there I ended up taking a couple of my torches. Tulio asked me to do this. He's like, take one of your torches that's not looking happy right now and move it back where it used to be, where you knew it was thriving. So I did. And the next day I came in and it was like, whew, wide open, flapping in the current. The mm. black algae was like turning like a tan, like a darker, wow. like a, not a tan, turned like a brownish color. And the next day the black algae was gone. So that made me put metal halides up over all my systems. LEDs, it's hybrid systems for everything. Metal halide, T5, LED, you can't just use LEDs in the long run. It can be detrimental to, to aquarium. So uh, the lighting question I uh, was just asking you, it's a good transition in terms of what I was talking about with Mike last week when he got a visit a while ago from Tulio, from, from Reef Bright, and um, Tulio came over to Mike's place and brought his uh, photo spectrometer there, and he found out that under Mike's LEDs that none of them produced UV light and um, the manufacturers say there is UV but the test revealed there was very little UV light and so Mike was wondering whether the lack of UV light in tanks lit by LEDs is actually contributing you know to more pathogens that can cause these kind of events I guess that you're uh, seeing in your tanks but um, I don't know. What are your um, What are your thoughts on this? I guess we. Well, I, I go back to what I said earlier. Yeah. Convince me that that UV actually kills bacteria to begin with, right? First, that's the first step. Otherwise, all speculation. Right. Right. People have already shown us that they can get corals to spawn and propagate without using metal halides. They're using LEDs, right? And these are corals that they've grown from frags and got them to spawn. Right. So if there wasn't enough UV in those lights or if the corals needed UV, it's definitely not hurting their growth or ability to propagate with LEDs. So how do you make that connection, right? that, well, there's something missing with LEDs, right? 
Maybe there's something missing, but is it affecting the life cycle of the coral? Right? Is it affecting the bacteria? That's a different question that I have no answer to. But it, but I, I don't feel comfortable making that jump. 